Yes! Why wasn't the iPhone invented in 1976 when Apple started? Hello Internet, my name is Chris and this is Faith Elements. It may sound like a dumb question, but have you ever wondered why it took Apple so many years to come up with the iPhone? The same two guys, Steve and the other Steve, who were at the uh, top of the company, at the helm if you will, in 76 and in 2006 when the iPhone R&D was at its peak. So why did it take so long? Steve Jobs had some of the basic ideas behind the iPad in the late 1970s, so why did we have to wait so long for it? I know, now, I know there are some obvious answers. First of all, demand just wasn't there. 30 years ago, devices like the iPhone could only be found in comic books and science fiction movies. The wireless networks in the late 70s and the early 80s wouldn't have been able to move the kind of data that we wanted to move, and what kind of data would we be moving back then anyway? It's not like the internet was anything to get excited about. Of course, the technology wasn't there. It's hard enough creating a device with, with this much functionality today, let alone 30 years ago. So of course the iPhone was completely impossible in 76, 86, or even 96. It takes years of technological advancements to get to the point where amazing inventions like the iPhone can come about. The iPhone, like so many other advancements in our world, is the result of progression. It is difficult to conceive any portion of modern life that isn't the result of progression. Mason workers lay bricks with a knowledge that goes back thousands of years. Medical advancements are made every day that draw from the knowledge of previous generations of medical professionals. If you've been watching any of the NCAA tournaments, you see a level of basketball playing on all teams that creates the potential for upsets at all times due to more and more teams learning how to take their game up a level. With every Olympics, we see records broken and new standards set. There's just something about advancement and progression that seems to be part of the human makeup. Unlike any other species on the planet, progress is part of our existence. I was in a recent discussion with a friend who held to the opinion that you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And to this sentiment, I completely agree. He's right, you don't have to be a part of a church or go to some local congregation to be a follower of Christ. Do you disagree with me? Well, wait, don't hit the dislike button, wait. Let, let, me just, let me just fill this out. We still have some time left on this video and I'd like the chance to complete my thoughts on this element of faith. Let's apply the concept of human progression to faith matters. If we are able to make so many advancements in human understanding of physics, electronics, communications, sports, and medicine, why would the same not hold true for a life of faith and theology? In the book of Proverbs, it is written as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And also in Proverbs, it is written, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. One enormous risk at eking out a life of faith on our own is that we will lean wholly on our own understanding. And most people would agree that they would not visit a self-taught dentist or allow a self-taught surgeon to perform an emergency appendectomy no matter how much pain they are in. We expect that plumber or electrician that comes into our home to have certain credentials that shows they have been trained to certain standards and practices. Why then? would we sell ourselves short when it comes to the single most important element of our lives and not do everything we can to ensure that we have the highest level of soul training available or possible? If we have such expectations for those around us involved in the daily functions of this life, should we not also pursue similar benefits when it comes to understanding what is to come in the next? Our single most precious commodity is our eternal soul. Are we really willing to risk making mistakes with our single most precious commodity. Something to pray about, don't you think? Hey, you know, I just couldn't end this like this. I couldn't let things in like this. Suppose you are thinking that maybe it's time to think about checking out a church, but you just don't know where to start. Will you hit me up with a, a direct message here on YouTube or on Twitter or at Faith Elements? Or we could continue this conversation in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe above and hit the share button with people you think might benefit from this. Take care and God bless.